you to know I've been feeling a lot. 30 minutes ago, I was out in my car with my wife, and I was just crying. You know, you're in one of those divine moments when you feel something bigger than yourself, right? Yeah, I feel that right now. That we're all a part of something really big. I just want you to breathe into that. Yeah. This Ted guy's pretty cool, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know who he is, but man, that guy's got me feeling. For the last month that I've known that I'm going to be up here on this stage, all I can do is cry. <laughs> so he's got some voodoo that I want to know about. So whoever you are, Ted, thank you. <laughs> Really, for the last month, I've, uh, I've felt scared. Like, I've felt terrified. I've felt frightened. Um, terrorized? <laughs> was that in the car? Wait, no, okay, that was this, this month I have felt that. I've felt inspired. I've felt so powerful. And not like that egoic power, you know, but like authentic power from the inside out. I felt that. So I just want to honor in this place feeling. Like I want to honor being from West Texas and feeling. I am the son of a bull rider. Yes, I am. And I am up here feeling before you, and that is a miracle in itself, and that is the win. <laughs> but I have, I've been feeling, and I want to honor feeling in this place. Because for so long, what I did was more important than how I felt. The vision was more important than the visionary. The hustle was more important than my little heart. And I grinded, and I worked, and I efforted, and I struggled. Whew, but not today. Today I will be a safe place for my heart. It doesn't matter. I don't give a fuck about this talk. <laughs> like, I don't. I really don't. Like I, it is about my heart. Yes. And I'm going to stand for my heart. <sighs> I'm going to stand strong for my heart. I'm not going to bypass my heart and give beyond my capacity. And my capacity for this talk was to sit up here and feel. It was to feel me and to feel you and to feel the world. Feeling's healing, y'all. <laughs> and there's a lot of healing happening inside of me. I spent a lot of my life looking really good externally. But on the inside, my heart felt orphaned. Do y'all know the definition of the orphaned heart? It's a heart that does not feel protected and provided for. It is a heart that does not feel safe and secure. And we, in this first world, have had our survival needs met many times over. Nobody's leaving here wondering if they're going to have food. And if you are, talk to me. We can get you some food. In our first world, the new epidemic is emotional abandonment. 
There's a generation that's speaking to us, that's letting us know that emotional abandonment is abuse too. It is. And I can just hear my little West Texas culturally programmed voice going, oh, come on now. You just got to suck it up, you sissy. Why are you even talking that abuse language? No, it's the real deal. It's a serious issue. Your heart getting bypassed to produce a result so that your parents did not have to feel their feelings is not cool. Not cool. Right? You performing your little ass off so that your parents could feel better about themselves and their identific- more attached to their, to their role, right? That's not cool. We're afraid of being afraid, right? We've been scared to feel. But today, not just me, all of us, we're in this together. You can feel it, right? We're taking a stand for humanity. Yeah, we're taking a stand for humanity. And that our production, our performance, our hustling will not come at the cost of our heart. And the, the outside in methodology is done today. You hear that? That approach. Can I tell you a little bit about me? Um, grew up in Clyde, Texas. Probably never heard of it. Yeah. Outside of Abilene. Yeah, that big. Town of 3,000 people, like I said, son of a bull rider and a beauty queen. They met at the Ector County Rodeo, Odessa, Texas. And I just want to honor my dad right now. Dad, I fucking love you, man. I really love you. I'm so thankful for you. Thank you for being relevant to my heart. And he hasn't always been relevant to my heart. Thank you for moving beyond doctrinal agreement and into a place of acceptance and understanding. Your love has changed me. Thank you. I was nine years old. And I was playing with the 11 and 12 year olds on my brother's team. That was kind of a humble brag. Um, <laughs> Playing baseball, the Clyde Little League ballpark, it was opening day. I'm leadoff batter as a nine year old with 11 and 12 year olds. Did I say that? Or <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure I said that. I was leadoff batter, and big John Chorn was on the mound. <laughs> John Chorn, yeah. And the third base coach gave me the take sign, and for some of you non baseballers, that means not, not to swing. And sure enough, what did I do? First pitch. <laughs> yeah, I swung. I popped it up. Catcher caught it. I was out, and I slammed my bat on the ground, and I started crying. And my dad was the first base coach. And my dad said, Branny, dry it up and get your ass in the dugout. And for some of you that do not speak West Texan... <laughs> dried up means stop crying and hit home runs. Yeah. So home runs I hit, grand slams actually. At the age of 17, uh, I was an international tennis player. At the age of 17, I won a round in the main draw of the U.S. Open. And at the age of 20, I accomplished a dream that I had since a little boy, and that was to play in Wimbledon, and I did it. That moment was such a beautiful gift for me. Not because of why you may think, because it was a real moment of celebration. It was not a real moment of celebration for me. It was a moment that all of my pain came out. 
It was a moment that I saw that the outside does not fix the inside. I got to see that from 8 to 20, bypassing my heart over and over and over and over, it catches up with you somewhere. And it caught up with me that night. And I had to feel all those feelings. And since that day, I've been on a journey of feeling. I've been on a journey of healing, just like all of you. I'm very thankful for that day because, like I said, it is a broken methodology, the outside-in approach. I feel like there's a group of people who are brave enough to put down the hustle, put down the grind, and really take a chance on their heart. Don't we all want to know if our heart will provide for us? Right? Don't we all want to know that? Don't we all want to know that, like, can it really be this good? Can it really be true? And you know what? I'm just getting, like, a glimpse. It can. Like, it can. My wife, she's amazing. Been together since we were 16. 16 and 17. 20 years. I would have found her wherever, even if we didn't grow up in the same area, I would have found you, Jen. Every turn, we've been letting go, right? The most tender impulse of the heart is to let go. It's to let go. When you want to hold on the most, what do you do? Do you squeeze the bunny? No, you let go. And we've been a part of some really cool stuff. I was senior pastor of a large congregation, growing congregation in Texas, 500 members. And as we started to transform and deconstruct, we let go of that. And, and if you want to know how to, like, um, if you want to know how to shrink a church, you can just talk to me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was pretty effective at that. Um, what you do is you, you, you stop the program, the programs, and, and, and you stop the four songs and a sermon, and you just bring everybody together to have real conversations around their pain. Because how many of you know that we grow up in homes where pain is the enemy? And I want you to know that pain is not your enemy. It's the denial of pain that has been your enemy. And I'm talking about emotional pain. It is not your enemy. Can you feel that? There's liberation in feeling all that needs to be felt. There's great power in feeling all that needs to be felt. We were taught, what? To dry it up. We were taught to be good girls. We were taught to what? Look good when we're in the grocery store. Don't throw that fit. That is wrong. That is irresponsible. And here's what I want to encourage you with. Be irresponsible. Be messy. Like, be really fucking messy. Like, the heart's messy, right? Because we know what's at the top. You can't selectively open your heart, can you? If you're going to open your heart to joy and to bliss and to peace, you have to open your heart to pain. And at the top layer of, of the heart is what? It's anger or surface frustration or anger turned inward, which is called depression. And as a society, have we been very good with anger? Have we been very good? Let me say this. Have we been very good with feeling our own anger? Have we been very good with harnessing our anger and channeling it in a direction, what, transmuting it in a direction of love? Have we been good with our kids when they have an outburst? No. But it changes today. You can feel it, right? We become safe places for ourselves. And here's what I want you to know, and I think the timer's going down pretty fast here. <laughs> you ever had one of those moments you just feel giggly and like you just want to laugh? 
I'm hitting that spot right now. I like you, girl. We can break out this holy laughter here pretty quick. <laughs> How many of you ever broken out into some holy laughter? Oh, man, that's some good healing balm, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I've got a buddy that says, Brandon, if you don't lose your place more than a couple of times, you haven't given your heart. So I just lost my place. <laughs> but we're becoming a safe place for ourselves. And here's what I want to leave you with. Like, show up for you. Like, like you may not be able to mend your relationship with a parent, but you know what you can do? You can come through for you. You know the greatest pain of all? It's the pain of personal abandonment. It's the pain of you abandoning your heart when you need you most. And I want to leave you with this, like, like, show up for you. If your heart needs support, you be the best damn supporter on the planet. Like, if, you, if your heart needs care, man, you get so careful, right? Like, you just, you just lavish care on yourself. If you need, man, if, if, if you need a, the feeling of abundance and extravagance, just be extravagant about yourself. Here's what I want you to know. Your heart will always back you up. The hustle will not. You will have to pay the piper at some point, but the heart will always come through. Gang, I think that's it. Let's land this thing. Thank you for having me. Yeah.